here we are with our example, I promised y'all. Okay, so let's look at this one. I already wrote it out, so you might want to pause this and write out the problem statement so you have it in your notes. But this one says we've got a supersonic nozzle that is a convergent divergent duct, so it looks like this, that's fed by a large reservoir at the nozzle inlet. So here's our reservoir over here. Now in the reservoir, our pressure is going to be 10 atmospheres and the temperature is going to be 300 Kelvin. Now at the nozzle exit, which is over here, our pressure is one atmosphere. What we want to do is we want to calculate the temperature and the density of the flow at this exit, so point two. And we're going to assume isentropic flow. Now anytime we see supersonic, that's a high speed flow, so we're going to have compressible flow which means we're going to assume isentropic flow. All right, so let's write our conditions out. So here at this point, our t pressure was 10 atmosphere, and then our temperature was 300 Kelvin. Now over here, I've got a pressure of one atmosphere. Now I want to find the temperature and the density. So T and rho is what we're looking for. And remember, we're assuming we have air here, so gamma is going to be 1.4 throughout the whole thing. Okay, so that's what we're given. So I want these two parameters, and I know pressure at both points. So remember when we derived our equations for the isentropic flow, we would relate one point to another. So that's what we're going to do here. So let's write out our equations. So I had P2 over P1. That was equal to rho 2 over rho 1. Raise that to the power of gamma. And we also had that relationship with temperature. So it was T2 over T1, which is gamma over gamma minus 1. Now again, we can use these equations because this is supersonic, which is high speed, and we are told to assume isentropic flow. All right, so basically what I want to do is I want to relate my pressure to my temperature. Let's do temperature first here. So that means we're going to use this and this. All right, so let's write that out. So we're going to have P2 over P1, and that's going to equal T2 over T1. And then we've got the power of gamma over gamma minus 1. Now all we have to do is plug everything in. So P2 is 1 atmosphere. P1 is 10 atmosphere. Notice those cancel. And then we're going to set that equal to this temperature. T2, I don't know what that is, so leave that as T2. Put it over T1, which is 300 Kelvin. And then gamma is 1.4. So we have 1.4 over 1.4 minus 1. Okay, and now we need to solve for T2. Alright, so this is just a little bit of algebra now at this point. So if we look at that, what we're going to end up with is this is 0.1, those units cancel, and then I've got T2 over 300. This ends up being 3.5. All right, now, how do we get rid of this and solve for that? Y'all remember? So if you think about it, if I have x squared, when I do the square root, the square root is really a power of 1 over 2. All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to have 0.1. We're going to raise that to the power of 1 over 3.5. Because you got to do, you know, you got to have to get rid of that 3.5. So just like you would take the square root of both sides, you're going to do the same thing here. So we'd have that, and then that's going to equal our T2 over 300. Okay, now what do we get with this? That is going to give us 0.517947 equals T2 over 300. Now you can solve. So T2 is 155.38 Kelvin, and that's T2. Okay, so that's our temperature here at the exit. So you can see your temperature is going to decrease as we go through that duct. So now we've got this. Now I just need density. And again, we're just going to use these relationships. 
Okay, so now we want density and you could use pressure or you could use temperature, whichever one you want. I'm gonna go ahead and use density and temperature. Okay, so I got T2 over T1 and then that's raised to the power of 1.4 over 1.4 minus one and then that's going to equal row two over row one to the power of 1.4. I already have my temperatures, so let's plug those in. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in our values. So let's start over here. So I'm gonna have 155.38, that's Kelvin's. T1 we know is 300, so let's put 300 in there. Now, we already know this exponent because we just did it over here. It was 3.5. And then we need to set that equal to row 2, which I don't know what that is yet. So let's put it in as an unknown. And then we've got row 1. Well, I don't have row 1 yet, right? So I need to find that value. Okay, so let's just hang on here and we'll leave this empty for now. And then that power is 1.4. So let's get row 1. All right, now I'm just going to use that equation right there. All right, so simple equation, we'll just plug in our values and then we'll have our density. So our pressure at 0.1 is 10 atmospheres. All right, I need to convert that over. So let's multiply that by 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth. And then we're gonna put that over R, which is 287, and then multiply it by T, which is 300, okay? So then that gives me my density, which will be 11.371. Now let's take that, plug it back in right here. All right, so now that we did that, we just go about the algebra to get row two, right? So once you do that, you're going to get that row two is 2.265 kilograms per cubic meter, just like that. Okay, so pretty straightforward. You're just relating the two points to each other using these equations right here. All right, the thing most people get tripped up on is doing this exponent when you have an unknown in here. For some reason, it throws people off. But just remember, think of the square root. Square root is an exponent of 1 over 2, so it's going to be the same thing here. You're just going to have 1 over 3.5, right? So, but that's about it. Now, the only other thing you got to pay attention to, the temperatures, remember they have to be on an absolute temperature scale. So we can't have Celsius or Fahrenheit in here. We need Kelvin or Rankin if you're stuck dealing with the English units. All right, so there you have it. And you can also compare your densities. Look how much more dense we were at the reservoir versus the exit. All right, big difference there. We also had a big difference in pressure. Okay, all right, so there we have it. So let's stop it here and we'll pick it up in the next video. See y'all.